Thank you for joining us for another On Call for All Kids, a weekly segment we have here at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, where we're talking to our experts about different pediatric health care topics. So today we are talking about drowning and how to prevent that with our Dr. Joe Perno. He is an emergency medicine physician here at the hospital. And Dr. Perno, it's that time of year, it's starting to get warmer. And we have to talk about it each year because drownings, they happen over and over again. And Florida leads the country in most drownings. Yeah, unfortunately, we talk about this topic every year and we're still the leader every year. So it's mm -hmm. something we need to focus on. We need to remind people to really be cognizant of it. as the weather gets warm. It's a beautiful day. We're out by the water. We need to do something to try to not be number one. So what's going on? Why does this? That's a staggering statistic that we lead it. Why does it continue to happen? Probably the most like the most common reason we're number one is there's so much water around. There's pools. There's the Gulf, the, the water, the bay, the streams, the canals, lakes. There's so much water around and it's around all year round for Florida. There's no winter time when things are frozen over and closed. It's just everywhere you can find it. So any body of water drowning can occur. We've seen it happen in bathtubs, five gallon buckets of water kids can fall into. It could be anything. So it's just prevalent everywhere and you just got to be on, your, on top of your game. And we were just talking about this as a parent when you go out to the pools it's not such a relaxing thing because the bottom line is you actually really do have to be on guard so oftentimes when there's a lot of adults around people think great lots of adults around but really that's not the case that's one of my nightmare scenarios so when there's more adults i get more worried actually so when you're at that big summertime barbecue everybody's there nobody's watching the child and that could be the concern is everybody thinks somebody else is watching so it's so important to identify someone who's going to watch the children even if it's only in shift work to determine who's watching and keeping out for everybody and then not only that sometimes people believe that when someone is drowning it's going to be this thrashing around very noisy but oftentimes it's silent yes it's because it, the kids will just slip right into the water and go right to the bottom they're not able to uh, keep themselves afloat, make noise, yell and scream. They'll just sink right to the bottom like a rock and it's, it's a mm. silent thing. So if you're not watching them, the most common scenario we see is that the kids have disappeared from sight and then people find them unfortunately at the bottom of the pool. Oh, it's so terrible. But what if you don't have a pool? So we'll talk about tips today. If you do have a pool, if you don't, should you not worry? No, unfortunately, like I said, water's everywhere, right? Your neighbors might have a pool and may not be properly secured. We know kids are curious, right? So they're going to go everywhere and they're going to explore. So you just always have to be careful. You go visiting friends and family or grandma's house, you need to know that maybe their yard's not as secure as your yard might be. So it's one of those things you just gotta pay attention. Okay, so recommendations for parents, what do they need to know to keep their kids safe and bottom line, alive? Yeah, so uh, being the water watcher, right? Yeah. You're wearing yours, yep. you got it here. So this identifies someone, like I said, you're at a big party, everybody's watching, but nobody really is watching. Uh -huh. Identifying someone and say, in the next half hour, it's your job to watch the pool and keep track of all the kids and then hand it over to somebody else. Okay. That's an important thing that we want to do. Knowing the risk factors, right? Knowing, okay. we know the best thing that will protect children is a four-sided fence around a pool, and that's great, but make sure the gate's closed. Okay. Make sure there's nothing next to the fence that they can climb up. We know kids love to climb, they can get in there. So. Those types of things can go a long way to help them. How about prepping your pool in your home? What do you need to do inside your house and or around the pool? So I mentioned the pool fence is yeah. great. Uh, having door alarms. So if you open the door, you know that the door has been opened. So that way the child is in the house. That's another common story. They weren't even yeah. outside. And the kids sneak out of the house just being curious. So having a door alarm that goes off every time that's open, that can help. There's alarms they sell that if something hits the pool itself would trigger an alarm. Little things that you can help just help monitor the situation. So it's really, it's being proactive to not allow it to get to that point, but things like knowing CPR, that's really good Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, in the, in the event, knowing to call 911 right away, getting them out of the pool. If someone there knows CPR, it's gonna help uh, uh, to resuscitate the child and whatever is needed. And today we're here at North Shore Pool in St. Petersburg, but swim lessons too. We just saw some kiddos getting a great swim lesson. Good it for that mom. Wonderful, absolutely. So swim lessons are excellent and the AAP is recommending them. We know for children three and four and above, they really can make a difference. For younger children, not sure how much it makes a difference, but it does get them teaches them some early safety techniques, some familiarity with the water. So even young babies, it's worthwhile doing just knowing the limitations of a one-year-old taking swim lessons. Yeah. Way different. And as you mentioned, we have a lot of water around the Tampa Bay area. I'm showing a U.S. Coast Guard approved uh, life jacket. Absolutely. So do they have to wear these at all times? You know, it, it, 
if you're on a boat, if you're in an event where you, something along those lines, I think that would be good. If you're playing at the poolside and you're watching them, that's fine. These are great. These are going to protect the child. Where we run into problems is when parents use the inflatable little swimmies that go on their arms. Those aren't going to be a life-saving device. This is going to keep the child upright and keep their head out of the water. So uh, you could relax a little bit more that's if they're right. wearing this. Okay, so Dr. Pernal, yeah. another option. Great. Thank you so much. If you want more information about preventing drownings and just being safer on the water, you can go to hopkinsallchildrens.org slash slash safe kids. And if you have an idea or a topic you would like us to cover, just comment below on this video. We would love to hear from you. And for more information about general pediatric health care, go to our website. It's hopkinsallchildrens.org newsroom. We'll see you next week.